Sometimes you need to spice up your data visualizations a little bit, bring some life to them by animating them. This can be tricky, and there are a lot of different tools out there that promise this, but I want to show you the ones that I use on my other YouTube channel where I analyze things like my home energy usage, efficiency of electric cars, and prices of things. Now, on that channel, I've been analyzing data about all of these different topics, electric cars, home batteries, solar panels, etc., for over seven years. And I started as a data analyst, if you could call it that, all the way back in 1998. So I went from having to write code by hand to generate graphs on a web page to having all these beautiful tools to doing it in a way that in, is incorporated into high production value videos. So I've seen kind of the full gamut of it. And I want to show you the one that I have landed on as far as my solution for kind of the best with the easiest or least amount of work. There's this really cool platform called Flourish.studio. It is a data visualization and storytelling platform. It is solely focused on that. It is a bit difficult to use, I will say. There are a ton of many options. It's not as simple and seamless, but in terms of what it's able to do, it's pretty awesome that you don't have to actually write any code to do this or use extremely complicated tools like Adobe After Effects, which I've used in the past to accomplish these same kind of feats. So I'll just show you one example here or a couple examples. And so I think this one here is about earthquakes in Japan. And so if I zoom in on this, you can see that here are dots for all of the earthquakes in Japan. That's pretty straightforward and a lot of visualization platforms can do that. Let me click next and you can see exactly where it is. But then here we go into the heat map. That is pretty awesome. You can really kind of see how that all works. And of course, it's about animating stuff. So you can dive in detailed, but you can also see a timeline here. So on the bottom, you see the, the little line moving and then you see the, the bubbles kind of popping up with the heat map there. So really, really cool stuff. And basically all you do is drop in your data, kind of choose which chart, your what story, you know, telling template you want to use and then you let it go from there. So I've been using Flourish for a while because it allows me to create fairly interactive, fairly animated graphs with really simple kind of menus and things like that. So here I am in my actual version of Flourish where I have all the presentations and things that I've done in the past. And what I did was previously I had formatted one with a black background and the certain colors I want and fonts and everything to match the other parts of my YouTube video. And so then I was able to just duplicate one of those, drop in this new data, and I was able to create this guy right here. And so this is a dual axis chart, it's called. And instead of having a single chart, which I'll click on and show you what that looks like, where the lines are on top of each other, that is fairly useful, I think. And it is interesting to see it that way. This isn't a bad representation whatsoever. But I kind of looked at this and thought uh, it might be nice to have a grid of charts. It's also, that's their term. It's also called a trellis chart or a matrix chart in other tools. Um, also, I think Edward Tufte calls it small multiples. So. Here, I essentially was able to uh, go into the data and that first spreadsheet I had, if you remember, I had month, total amount due and usage. And notice the month that's listed here is the actual date. It's not the, the, the pre-formatted one. And that's because this tool lets me choose how I want a date to be displayed. Kind of nice. So if I go back to preview, you can see that I chose dual axis versus line chart versus all of these other chart types here. And then from there, I just go through and I kind of add in all of the other uh, options. So instead of that one, I, for this video, I actually did a grid of charts. And I think the reason I like this one is because now I have the labels right above the chart and the grid lines all line up and everything like that. So I think this is a really good representation. I'll give you a full screen view here in a second what it looks like. But as you go down, you can see the menu options can get quite complex. There's all kinds of little details here about the different axes, texts, margins, and all that. So this is why what I did was I essentially, when I first started using this, created a format, one that I liked, and it just copied that every single time. I may change things a little bit, maybe the size of this or that to match the actual visualization. But in general, I don't want to mess with it because going back through and finding all of that is, is can be cumbersome, right? And so here you go. Here's actually where the numbers and the date formatting are. So you can choose those kind of things. So this is the tool. Now, when I, I go full screen here, what I'll do, it'll it'll automatically start playing. So I'll wait on that. But when you export and publish this, it just gives you a web page, but it also has a Conva integration where you can go add this as an app inside of Conva and then go and link to your account and then drag these in. So if you did want to do something more advanced or maybe one of those animated heat maps with a thing or want any of the really cool stuff you can do in Flourish, 
you can actually still embed that to your presentation, which is nice because changing fonts and titles and all that stuff in this platform and Flourish is kind of difficult. Where in the other one, it's going to have way better options just for the typography, the colors, the backgrounds, et cetera, et cetera. So when I click full screen preview here, you'll see what it did is it animated those in a way that actually works really well. So I've been able to do this many times before with Adobe After Effects, but the actual amount of work it takes is just tremendous. And this gets you, I would say, 90% of the way there. And I know that's all fine and practical, but of course we want to do something ridiculous and fun like a bar chart race. So let's get going on the bar chart race. Okay, so to get started, as always, we need our data. And we're gonna take our data set here from this basketball archive. And what we have are some really, really descriptive stuff. So we have the team, the team color, the name, this column I created called color override, which then allows it to actually change the color of the bar to match the player's team that they were on. Then to the right of that, we have a photo, a link to that. And then we have the years spread out from left to right from the earliest all the way to our most recent data set. So it's really simple, the data, but this format is important for Flourish to use it. So we get our data here like this. I'm just going to copy it, flip back over, and inside of Flourish, I'm going to say new visualization. And then I will scroll down through all of the myriad of chart types they have and I will find bar chart race. You can see it here on the left. There's so many different options of this as well, but we'll just click bar chart race. It will pre-populate it with this population data you can see. So it's basically already formatted with images, colors, etc. We just basically need to go change the data here. I'll click on this guy. Notice up top, it has the data types and the colors match on the right side exactly what they're being used for. So values, like it has here are left to right. So they're in columns instead of in rows. If you're working with data a lot, you probably are used to seeing them in rows. So if you did wanna do this, you would need to pivot that back around. Okay, so we'll go ahead and delete all of that. Go back up to column A, paste in our data set, paste. It'll analyze that. We got common team. So the label here is going to be C, that's correct. The color override we're going to use in the bars the photos it already picked up so you can see what it's already doing there and then it goes values from s all the way to in this case we actually wanted to go to a n so f to a n and then for categories if we wanted we could put in the team color that way it matches we don't necessarily want all of those things there and for the image it already picked that up so we're doing really good right i'll go back to preview i definitely don't want this legend there that's totally unnecessary. So I'm gonna go down and remove that. And it, sometimes it gets a little wonky, right? So what it's doing here is the colors aren't really adding up. So for color overrides, what I wanna do is paste in the person's name with the color. And so if I go back to Excel, I can do color override. I'll highlight all of that, copy, go back into here, paste that guy in. And now when I tab out of there, it should be correct. In fact, let me go back to the data and to the categories, and I'm gonna delete that guy there because I don't want that to use for color at all. And then back here onto color override, by bar, and there you have it. So that way it colors based on the team color. Some of the team colors sort of change over time. And so that's why I think this works better than doing it the other way. But essentially you have the bar chart showing it's a bit wild and active right now. Um, you can change the duration down below if you go down to timeline and animation and say timeline duration let's do like 300 seconds there you go that's a bit better. it's a bit spastic otherwise so you can see some images uh weren't there and some things like that you can kind of adjust with the the sizing and everything and once you do it you end up with something that looks like this in fact let me go full screen for you here so that is a fun way to do this bar chart race. I'm really curious if this is something you would use in business. If so, I'm just dying to know what. So please leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about everything else here. I hope it helps you. If you have any other suggestions for tips like this, leave them down there. It's early days of the channel. So I want this to be a real two-way street as well as if you're curious about maybe how to automatically pull in data from a website. I had that video right here that I just posted. So go check that out after this one. Let me know what you think in the comments as always. Don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow up.
I'll see you guys back here next time.